A lot of people get tripped up on whether or not they should start with the emergency fund or continuing to pay off debt. I'm going to answer this question and a lot of common questions I get about this particular scenario in this video. Hey guys, it's Justine with Debt Free Millennials, the channel to help you crush your debt and live payment free. Now, part of crushing debt is actually starting with figuring out what to do with your emergency fund, the debt payoff plan. There's a lot of things that go into both of these camps. I think about savings and I think about debt and how do I address both of them together. Now, let's go ahead and answer this question right up front. You always start with the emergency fund first. And that is because the emergency fund prevents you from getting into debt. And it also prevents you from increasing any existing debt that you might already have. An emergency fund should be in place to cover your basic living expenses. This does not cover uh, restaurants, shopping, clothing, spending money on the fun stuff. This is only to cover your basic living expenses in case of an emergency. Your basic living expenses includes things like rent or a mortgage payment, utilities, groceries. So when I say food, I mean groceries and not restaurants. It also includes any car related expenses such as gas for the car, car insurance, any uh, tags that you might need to pay for. And you also should include things like internet and your cell phone plan. This day and age, we absolutely need those two things in order to help us get out of this emergency, such as if you were to experience a job loss, you would need internet <laughs> in order to apply for more jobs or maybe even sit on a virtual interview. So let's talk about some other examples of an emergency. Not only would a job loss definitely be considered an emergency, but what if your car breaks down, the furnace goes out, you pop a flat tire, a medical emergency, the house floods, or your cell phone breaks. Any and all of these would be considered emergencies and you definitely want to have cash set aside in those cases. So if we're starting with the emergency fund, instead of making big headway on debt, then how much should that emergency fund be? If you are still in debt, then aim for an emergency fund that has two to three months of living expenses set aside in that account. If you are debt free, aim for an emergency fund that has at least six months of living expenses or more set aside in that account. Me personally, my husband and I have a six month emergency fund set aside. Some people are comfortable with a nine month emergency fund or a 12 month emergency fund. I even heard of somebody who had two years worth of living expenses set aside. I thought that was a little overkill, but do what works best for you. Now, the way that I see it when it comes to money specifically is that money is energy. If we are trying to move money in 16 different ways, then that force is really nothing. It makes very little impact. Rather than if we were to focus all of our extra money into one goal, and in this case, that would be the emergency fund first, then we're going to feel that impact even more because we're making a lot of headway by focusing that money in one direction. Now, I talked about two to three months of living expenses equal to your starter emergency fund if you're in debt. But a lot of people are like, whoa, that's actually multiple thousands of dollars for me. Let's break down your emergency fund into mini goals. So let's take a look at this example. Let's say that you had rent equal to $950 per month, your cell phone plan was $70 per month, internet $40, groceries and toiletries equal to about $275 per month, electricity, natural gas are $40 each, and then gas and car insurance is $100 and $200. In this case, one month of basic living expenses is $1,715. Two months of living expenses is $3,430, and three months of living expenses is $5,145. Now, if you are starting from scratch, aim for a goal number one of 
$15. So now we're just looking at $1,700 as our first goal. Then after that, you can aim for the $3,400. Then after that, $5,145 for goal number three. Now in this example, a fully funded emergency fund would just be over $10,000. So see how we went from $10,000 seems like so far away to just $1,700. If you could commit to $500 per month towards that emergency fund, you'd have it completely funded in just over three months. Then you can work on the next goal and then goal number three. And remember, if you're still in debt, after you hit two to three months of living expenses in that emergency fund, stop and redirect that money into your debt and adding that extra towards your debt payment. Then while you're working on that debt-free plan, once you become debt-free, then you can go back to the emergency fund and work on building that up to the fully funded amount. And that example was over 10K and that would be equal to six months of living expenses. So let's talk about some of the common questions I always get when I'm talking to either my budget bootcamp students or I'm working with somebody or somebody's DMing me inside of Instagram. I always get these questions. So let's, let's go ahead and address this up front. First question is, only paying the minimums on my debt while I build the emergency fund feels really scary. Can't I add more to my debt while I'm doing this? You sure can, but again, it comes back to that money is energy analogy, right? So if you're trying to pay down debt and build up the emergency fund and then, oh my gosh, the car breaks down, I have to stop what I'm doing and then go back and deplete the emergency fund, but I don't have enough and I put more towards the debt, but now I actually have to add to the debt to cover the car repair expenses. See how that gets a little messy? Instead, what you could do, if this is still uh, something that is causing you a ton of anxiety, is still aim to put as much towards the emergency fund as possible and then make a little debt payment on the side. So what I mean by that is, $500 goes towards the emergency fund and maybe an extra 50 bucks gets added to your debt payment. Also, if you're going to do that, make that extra debt payment to one specific debt. That's why the debt payoff plan is so important to have intact because you know exactly which debt you're attacking first. The next question I always get is, why two to three months of living expenses for a starter emergency fund? I'm gonna tell you this now, $1,000 in an emergency fund is simply not enough to even cover the most basics of emergencies. Think about it, new cell phones nowadays are close to $1,000 anyway. Think about your major car repair that you had in the past. Was that close to $1,000? These are things that you're going to have to take into account for. And I'm telling you, so many millennials inside of my private Facebook group agree that two to three months of living expenses has helped them feel more safe and secure that they had that in their emergency fund rather than the $1,000. In fact, I've talked to folks who said, I had the $1,000 emergency fund and I had to deplete it several times because it was not enough. And then I had to go back and keep building it up and it delayed their progress on paying down the debt. The last question that I always get is, where should I keep my emergency fund? Keep it in an account that is easily accessible or liquid. Normally, this is a savings account. You'll wanna take a look at a high yield savings account. This is my favorite type of savings account to use, especially for emergency funds, because they typically earn more interest on these types of accounts. They're way better than traditional savings accounts or money market accounts because they earn more interest. And the reason being is because they do not typically have traditional brick and mortar locations, no physical overhead expenses to take care of, thus passing along the cost savings to you in the form of interest. I'm telling you now, the biggest offenders of those banks that are charging little to no interest on savings accounts include Chase, Navy Federal, USAA, Wells Fargo, Bank of America. If you are using any of these banks, please, for the love of God, run, don't walk, and open up a high yield savings account instead. These banks are just charging very ridiculously low interest. It makes me sick. 0.01%. That's ridiculous. You could be earning over 3% with banks like Capital One or Ally or Synchrony or Aspiration. There's so many. I've done a whole video on the best banks that are currently earning a ton of interest, high yield savings accounts. I will link to that up here in the cards for you to check out. 
I don't make any commissions or money off of these banks. I just personally love them so much and I test them out for you. Do yourself a favor and put your emergency fund there. So that answers the question, should I work on building my emergency fund or pay down the debt? Always start with your emergency fund, two to three months of living expenses while you're in debt, when you're debt free, six months or more. How much are you aiming for in your emergency fund? Tell me in the comments below. If you like this video, give it a big thumbs up and I'll catch you in the next one. Oh!